Next up, Cold War. Mapoche are trying to kill Cardiff. I, I can see what you're doing. I'm I'm just I'm leaving my units here. I don't I don't want to have to deal with this. Actually, you can go to Toledo as well. Loads of spies on the way to Toledo. Lovely to see. Oh, and this is wonderful as well. My coal and my oil are now jumping around from resource to resource as the power plants try and work themselves out. I still need more resource, and to that extent, I should probably make sure that I've got all of the oil that could be dug up out of the floor, dug up out of the floor. Yeah, we need to stay powered. I, the power drain on these cities is intense. India's putting a spaceport up. I reckon England are the other people to be worried about on that front. We'll just have a quick look and yep, they've got rocketry. Rocketry. Two people have discovered rocketry. That's fine. It takes the AI probably about 50 turns from a point where they start to build a spaceport to get anywhere near winning. So we've got loads of time. Late game turns, you can do a ton with them. The late game is always better to catch up. Always better to catch up. Bam. 20 population in a big city and you can see I think four projects just finished in one go there. Yep, I just got 800. We're catching up on this aid request now. It's worth having a think about Biosphere in advance because it's one of the most fiddly placements for a wonder. It needs to be next to a neighborhood and adjacent to a river. So find the river first, put the Biosphere down and then say, okay, what's the appeal like in this area? It's all bad. I'll put a neighborhood down on this tile. Once we've got the Biosphere, yeah, tourism is going to become a lot easier to obtain. We have now pretty much caught up we're within gold range anyway, so my cities can start to build other things. We're just going to work on that stadium. That is a really important thing for me to work on. The tier three government plaza buildings, it pretty much goes like this. War department is if you are aggressively defending for your life or going for a domination victory. National history museum is if you're going for a culture victory. And royal society is if you're going for a science victory. I'm going science for now. I think it's a little bit more versatile, but that's the logic to it. Anyway, let's get a hydroelectric dam. This actually gives a ton of tourism with biosphere. Biosphere turns anything that generates environmental power into tourism and triples it. So that six power becomes 18 power. It's amazing. And that is literally 18 tourism. You cannot get enough of it. It's wonderful. Okay, Zulu is going to be really annoying here, aren't you? I need this oil. Please take your unit off the oil. Ugh, <laughs> oh dear. Well, now that we've got synthetic materials, we need to make sure that we have renewable sources of power that we can spam. Geothermal plant is really good. I'm going to pick up composites now for a wind farm. This gives two power, which is six under the biosphere, six tourism, and then that can be boosted by another 50%, which goes to nine tourism per tile. This is why the biosphere rush is so successful. Once we've got composites, then we'll go for satellites to get solar farm, which does the same thing. This is for flatland. This is for hills. Build two biplanes, boost with a spy, own three tanks. Nothing there I'm going to realistically boost. So we'll just use our tech. I'm about to get a bunch of grievances with Mapuche here, taking artifacts from their land. Yeah, they're not going to like that. Sorry. 25 grievances a pop. Yeah. They may not like us after this, but what can you do? Alva Alto. Not the most useful engine it, but does give appeal to tiles that I own, so you can make a pretty decent city using national parks. That's annoying that Goddard came through there. Ah, uh, what can you do? I've got 117 points coming in per turn, but England might nab Goddard. That's 40% production towards space race projects. I really should have skipped. Still picking up artifacts. This is a shipwreck. That gives me era score for finding it. Archaeologists are really, really good for error score actually. I always forget just how much they obtain. One every time you pick something up. Oh, three cities is always really good. This is Lautaro and Barbarians is really good as well. Once you've filled up an archaeological museum, then you can start moving artifacts around in order to get the theming bonuses. Theming bonuses, very good on artifacts. Just going to start working on tourism. It's really good to put ski resorts down on mountains. Mountains are unworkable tiles and unless you're putting national parks down in them, each ski resort gives you five tourism, which is cool, but also an amenity in that city. So we've actually just made Barcelona ecstatic, which is awesome. Oh, Geneva's taking some damage. What? What did that? The tank. The tank finally attacked. Yes. Go on, England. You know you want to. Take the city back. There's a good chance England may raise Geneva, by the way. If that happens, that'll be unfortunate. But I'd rather something happen to it, you know? Oh, you're just taking out units rather than anything else? That's fine. If England's got one tank, hopefully they've got more. No, they've got 117 military strength. This, by the way, would have been a really good domination game. Nobody's really built an army. Here is an admiral, almost up to Mary. Yep, Goddard has been taken, unfortunately. No matter. German industry means that we don't need the boosts from Goddard. It would have been helpful. We don't need them, though. One thing to note, you get two malices from sending archaeologists into people's lands. Every time I take an artifact, I take a permanent minus five penalty. If I do this too much, I won't be able to actually renew my alliance. Uh, that's in addition to grievances. It's just worth keeping an eye on that. Archaeologists are ways that you can really, really annoy people. 
Well, there we go. Overshot by about 400 gold. We'll never get that back, but we've got 100 Diplay Favor and another two Diplomacy points. Now, one of the overarching themes that I was really thinking about with this playthrough was sort of showing you what to do when things go wrong, how to pivot, how to change the style of your play, how to be incredibly flexible. And I'm thinking back, one of the big times when that happened was when the religion went right at the beginning of the game. You can see we've still got the two holy sites and never really built any more after that because, well, we never had a need to. But the way we used other people's religions, we've been taking Catholicism, taking a bunch of culture, we've been taking Islam and taking a bunch of food. When Spain decided to attack us from nowhere and we ended up returning and taking one of their cities and then it happened a second time and we ended up taking another city and we still have the rest of the world absolutely in love with us. Sometimes the game doesn't go right. Yeah, sometimes it just goes horribly wrong and the best made plans are totally left on the wayside. What do you do then? Work on your industry, work on your core. Look at this. This is what I'm using to get through most of the game. Eight production, 11 production, 10, 10, 14. Quadruple those amounts. This industrial zone combined with its coal power plant is worth 56 production. I mean, this is a four population city and it's got over 100 production. It's nuts. And my strategy for Diplo Favor has kind of been a similar thing. All I did was take monarchy and use the wall effect with my Renaissance walls to pick up a load of diplomatic favor. I was selling my diplomatic favor off all game in order to generate gold up until maybe the industrial age when the voting got serious and then we kept it and that has actually lined us up for a diplomatic victory. But what if this wasn't necessarily going as well? Because at the moment in 18 turns I will win the game. That will give me one point. I will get an extra point. I'll be on 20 out of 20. Equally there is a point somewhere in here when I get carbon recapture and there's a point somewhere over here when I unlock seasteads. So you know I've won unless something drastically goes wrong I've won. But what if it hadn't gone right? What if some of the votes hadn't quite gone my way? What if I hadn't got Statue of Liberty? I'm going to just sort of show you a few things now as we go along as to sort of what I've done. The campuses is a really big one. I've got a campus in pretty much every single major city. They all have research labs in. That's how I've got 600 and something science without any science boosts at all. Ludwig and Germany get no science boosts. Uh, they're not particularly good at it compared to anybody else. They're very distinctly average and all of my campuses have plus three, plus two, plus one at the very most. Oh no, I've got a plus four now. Hey, they actually built up to a plus four eventually. I've got one. But overall, you can tell that they're not very good when you look at the rationalism card and it's only giving you 13 science. That's pretty poor. Campus adjacency plus 23 overall in my whole empire. That's, that's hilarious. But by working on that and keeping my culture really high, and you can see my culture is really high because we put down a load of wonders, like for instance, Apadana is now worth 12 culture. That's crazy. Theatre squares are being popped down now. We've got a load of great works that are appearing, a load of artifacts. By doing this, we keep our tourism high and we're working on that as well. So I'm going to take you a little bit further down into this game than maybe I envisioned at the beginning. Once we finish the stadium, I'm going to build the neighborhood. Once the neighborhood in Munich is done, we will get Biosphere. Over in Cologne, I'm going to buy an aquatic center. This is going to send three amenities, if the city's powered, which hint, it will be, to a range of this, which is a lot of cities. I'm hoping this will be the thing that pushes my cities over and I will get ecstatic in most places, especially once the stadium finishes. The Royal Society is now finished. I'm not going to worry about heritage tourism and other culture or tourism cards up until the point of getting social media. 50% extra tourism to civilizations I have a trade route to. That's really big, but also space race, 15% production towards projects if I have a military academy or a seaport in that city. I quite like that card. Pretty cool. Cristo Redentor. Oh, this is really, really good. Holy cities. Don't have any of those, but what I do have is a couple of seaside resorts. A load more tourism from those. I'm going to preemptively get Curator with Pingala just to boost my tourism up in my capital a little bit. And as you can see, drought finally finished. Let's get these farms fixed. Oh my lord, a mitigated flood. I never thought I'd see the day. Brilliant. Did you see, actually, I had 13 cities that were ecstatic there just before I ran out of trade. Like, I've just got to re-up re my trade deals. 14 luxuries is nowhere near enough. Yeah, look at this. Look at my cities becoming ecstatic. Now, that's it. 18 cities, all of them ecstatic. That's what you want to see. 20% on all yields across everything. It's it's so worth it. Always check back in on your artifacts every now and then. You might find that it's a couple of them theme. Very, very nice bonus when that happens. Mary Catherine Goddard. One level of diplomatic visibility with everybody. And, oh, Sarah Breedlove. She is the merchant I was looking for. Huge tourism boost. 25% to anybody I've got a trade route to. Which is, I believe, India. 
Pouchet, Zulu, Coupe, England, and Nubia. Am I missing someone? Yes, Spain. I think a trade route has just expired. Oh no, I've got the bonus because I think they're trading with me. Yeah, they are. So they're giving me the bonus that way. That's nice. My builders are now going to start putting environmental power down everywhere. You'll notice as well the AI stops letting you be your friend. Once you get beyond a certain threshold, normally when you're about to win the game, it starts to just not accept your friendship requests. It's sort of a half-baked thing that the AI has coded into it, where it goes, oh, I need to be a little bit forceful here. I can't just accept a friendship. The, you know, the player's about to win. But then it kind of normally goes through the turns and gets to Nubia's turn, and then they'll have their turn, and they'll give you, you know, a declaration of friendship on their turn. There you go, look, literally as I'm saying it. So it's kind of half there. The game knows to refuse the friendship on your turn, but not on its. Moderate Flood, that's another era score. Look at this, we're just golden aging everywhere now. Speaking of, there is the first neighborhood. Shah, amazing. This is an engineer that basically trades gold for a wonder for three. And now we're on to oh, Korolev. Korolev is the first engineer that you can use to rush space parts. Capital, let's work this biosphere, please. And hey, presto, there we go. 10 turns. I reckon we can speed that up. Look at this, 20% production and then another 29% towards buildings and wonders. It is in all of these percentages that we make our joy. Sources are active in Toledo. Let's reduce enemy loyalty by 25. It's, uh, as you can see, pretty close to starting to fall to me. There's stuff we can do. In fact, actually, it did start to fall and then Reina was brought into Toledo. So what we're going to actually do is keep working on the population of these two cities. Barcelona's still got a ton, absolute ton of housing available. So I'm going to put it on food focus and then this city as well. Do you see how it barely changes the production if I do that? It's because all of the production is coming from Hansa and all of the districts surrounding it. The food is almost, uh, well, the tiles that the city works are almost irrelevant. So what I love about Germany, you can just focus on food. They're kind of a food sieve because all your production comes for three. There's nothing to worry about. I tell you what, this engineer needs to move. I really want this oil. <laughs> I really do. Now, Space Race unfortunately takes out the science for Renaissance Walls card in your government, but that's okay. By this point, you probably don't need it anymore. If you're going for a science victory, Integrated Space Cell is the one that you want. 15% production on space projects is a big deal. I'm going to take resource management and extra aluminium and oil. That goes a long way when you consider, well, this. Look at this. Aluminium on the market sells for quite a bit. Actually, you're saying that. I think I've sold all of my aluminium already. <laughs> we've, we've capped the market. Yeah, there you go. We'll, we'll resume our supplies soon. And actually having an extra oil per turn means that I'm going to just make sure that all of my cities have power. Hatusa gives me two of each strategic resource that I have revealed but not improved. Yeah, go on, ma'am. This is also going to give Kilwa bonuses, which is 15% science in all cities. As cities get a moment, I'm going to start building spaceports. I would like a spaceport in most of my major cities. That would be an amazing upgrade for me. And as you can see, we're now getting huge gold and food and production from all of these trade routes to my allies. This is democracy and Visselbank and all adding together. And Munich just shaved a turn off biosphere and is now above 200 production. So England has actually started launch Earth satellite. The Deity AI will often do this before you. Keep an eye on this graph. Has the AI research satellites, nanotechnology, smart materials? If it has, panic. Then they're getting ahead. But at the moment, yeah, you can start the first project all you want. I'm just doing it in my own time. Actually, I'm going to use one of the charges of Shah, considering I've got all the gold in my bank and I can do this, to build a Stadio. It's possibly the best wonder in the game. It's very, very strong. It gives two amenities to every city in your empire. Now, if you're not ecstatic already, that is a 10% yield boost in everything science, culture, faith, growth. It's amazing. Plus, it gives every city an additional six culture per turn. Three monuments per city. It's a huge boost to your culture. Oh, look, we actually siphon funded. That was my first spy project that has worked. Oh, I've never been prouder. Steel technologies of two levels higher. Go on, then. I'm still consuming pretty much all of my oil and coal every turn for power. So this is where I start to put solar farms down. Pretty much everywhere. Yeah, we're going to have a lot of renewable energy. A lot of it. Buy a Sphere will make sure of that. Well, I've unlocked rocketry. I've unlocked satellites. Next up is nanotechnology, and that's the first three projects. Cristo Redentor is a really good pick if you're going for religious tourism. So relics, holy sites, anything like that. Reliquary's religion is a really, I mean, you need this one. But it mainly stops the enlightenment penalty against religious tourism. Now, I don't actually have much religious tourism, but if I did, that would effectively negate it. It also gives me more tourism for the very few seaside resorts I've got. This is now giving me 10 tourism on that one. 12 tourism on 
on this one. Yeah, I mean, it's a very small amount, but it's still relatively useful. Biosphere, there we go. 200% power for all offshore wind farms, or as most people would call that, offshore wind farms. <laughs> Don't know what was going on there. Solar farms, wind farms, geothermal plants, and hydroelectric dams, plus any power I get is equal to tourism immediately. That one wonder just gave me 260 tourism per turn, and I have barely got started. So what happens now is we realize that all of our cities are happy because of Estadio. I no longer need liberalism. Let's put in online communities, which is 50% tourism output to civilizations I have a trade route to. That's all of them. Science foundations are still working really hard for us. And collective activism, the first amazing card to 5% culture for every city state I'm suzerain of. Going to give me 255 per turn. This is why having a lot of culture and a lot of city state friends can often be a very good idea. Zulu actually have just been forced to move all of their units, which is really funny because I've just just moved all my builders away. I don't actually need the oil anymore. We've got enough power. I mean, if I show you the power graph, this is Munich. It says six power. It's not six power from a hydroelectric dam. It's actually 36 because what I believe it does is it actually gives me power for both dams. It just does it in a really weird way. Six and six, I and mean, then it triples them. Yeah, so I'm actually on 30. I mean, that's 36 tourism just from my city center. Oh, I love it. Science wise, once you've unlocked nanotech, oh, actually, I'm just going to take a quick dip into this because offshore wind farm is the instantaneous tourism victory. This is a two power per turn, which don't forget is tripled. So that's six power, nine tourism, but it can be used on any coastal tile. So basically just every tile in your empire. So we'll do that. And then we're going to see which tech do I need to find the next ones. Actually, robotics reveals more for me. So we'll go for robotics first. There's seasteads, by the way, that gives me a diplomacy point. So in order to win the game, all I need to do is actually just get this tech. So we'll do that quickly. We'll win the game and then I'll show you what I was doing otherwise. I showed this on a playthrough a little while ago and it blew people's minds, right? I'm going to do it again. You see how I've got ski resorts in my nation? Did you see them? One, two, three, four. Grab the camera and shake it and uh, you'll see that this happens. <laughs> it's like a little snow globe. Do you know you could do that? Oh, very confusing for the viewer, but still good fun for me. Oh, it also causes a, a torrent of water across my land, seemingly. <laughs> oh, don't, I don't know what's going on there. We're gonna we're gonna move away pretty quickly. Pingala has been fully upgraded. Now he has 30% production in all space race programs. And do you see what I'm doing now with my core cities? Spaceport, 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 spaceport. You want about four or five of them, ideally. And Germany does this really well because all of these are your crazy high production cities. 175 production. To 200 production, 124, 124, 139. Lovely. You can see as well now, we've got to 1,000 tourism, which means we're starting to very quickly win a cultural victory. Now, I said I wanted to get to between one and a half and two and a half thousand. I still maintain that is what you need. My spy is now lowering the loyalty in this city. So I'm getting bread and circuses nearby just to see if I can put a little bit of pressure on it. Probably can't. It's probably not enough. But if I could, it would be very cheeky. You never want to do this vote unless the near by citizens pressure is within a plus or minus 20 range. Otherwise, sometimes what you can do is you can be putting pressure on a city, but it's got way more than 20 population pressure, so it doesn't make any difference. My troops are merely passing by India. Come on now, what's going on? Where is it? Look, my troops are only here because you are stood outside Geneva, not attacking. What are you doing? Come on. So this is something I was warning about before. If you don't buy the great works early enough, what happens is that your culture gets high enough that the AI goes, nope, not selling to you. Now, I think it's just because last turn it said I was going to win. I don't think it's going to last like that. Oh, Chamagrupta luckily has just offered me friendship. Zulu is refusing to at the moment, which is annoying because quite a few of my trade routes are going to Zulu and I'm no longer getting Vizzle Bank and all democracy routes from it. Oh, Coupe. My troops are merely passing by. Has Geneva been liberated yet? It is not. Am I going to have to do this myself? I'm going to have to do this myself, aren't I? A lovely little cheeky one here. Environmentalism. 25% extra tourism across my empire because a thousand tourism is not enough. It's never enough. John Roebling, one immunity and two housing for the city. You've got three charges of that, I believe. And Korolev is just finish a project instantaneously and you've got two charges of that. I'm going to use this all on my capital. Just make my capital a super city. Always remember to sell your strategics. Look at this gold. Eiffel Tower. All tiles in my civilization gain two appeal. This means that you 
can put national parks down everywhere and it means that your seaside resorts all have more tourism which again is doubled by Cristo Redentor and there's Seasteads Diplomacy 20 points out of 20 there's the victory turn 232 just as England finishes its earth satellite it has satellites now so it can do the moon landing but as you can see we're rushing through we'll catch up pretty quickly oh smart materials exoplanet expedition that is the fourth project so we want that one and then the booster project is always second to last so there is our final tech really we want to push up to about a thousand to a thousand five hundred science as soon as we can oh no I, probably people in the comments already figured that out but that's six power that of course is not a second hydroelectric that is cardiff's power coming from the harbor i figured it out late don't worry we figured it out though talking of science one two three that is six envoys into fairs and now we're getting more from our research labs so we're going to see the victory screen in a second but don't go away too quickly because i'm going to play probably about 10 15 turns more of this game just to show you how the other victory conditions are going as i say this was more of an explanation about just how having a really really high production and gold core in the middle of your empire could really flourish a lot of different victory types and, and i think this is a really good example but let's just have a look at some of the stats diplomatic victory if you've never done a deity victory victory before this is a really good one because you've got to be playing well to get it and the more you focus on walls better defended you are and deity well it's got nothing on you marcus aurelius very nice let's have a quick look buildings constructed this line should always be way higher than the ai's you are the player the more buildings you build the better you do it's just like the districts constructed graph this should always be higher that's how you beat the ai cities captured two every time spain declared war on me i took a city cities founded if there was more space on the map we would have really settled more but we were limited on size but that's okay great people earned yep towards the end of the game we really started powering through most of those were engineers to be fair player culture we were quite competitive and actually took the culture lead after turn 170 so you can see on deity just how long it takes for you to overtake the ai a lot of the time player science as well as a good example it wasn't until turn 200 i took the lead on that but look how much more i've got towards the end of the game you catch up at the end way more than at the beginning score yep took over about turn 170 25. Wonders constructed. It wasn't until turn 130 I made my first wonder. You don't need wonders to win the game, especially not as Ludwig. Just do what you want to do. Right, there's environmentalism. And you can see victory in 28 turns because we've now up to 100, and, no, not 100, 1,337 tourism. I realize there's a better mod I could be using to show you tourism a little bit better. Let me just quickly reload the game so I can turn it on so you can see it. So here we are. We've reloaded back into the game. It's exactly of the same turn but this time we have a lovely mod it is specifically called Sukratact tourism overview screen it's really really handy and it looks a little bit like this this gives you in-depth reasoning as to whether you're getting tourists what you've got to do to get them it's really really handy and you can see at the moment we've got 1337 tourism per turn and then the different malices and modifiers we've got 75 percent extra for trade routes 25 percent extra at the open borders and then minus 40 if the enemy has a different tier 3 or tier 4 government and only minus 20 if it's a tier 2 or tier 1 government. So at the moment we're losing quite a lot of tourism just to our government. It's not great. With predictive systems what we're going to do is make this core tourism number absolutely pop. We'll make it go crazy. Right now the domestic tourism leader is Zulu. They are gaining three tourists every turn. Every time they get 100 culture they gain a tourist. So with 314 per turn they're making about 31 every 10 turns. I need 1,600 tourism with them in order to get one tourist back, but I get it from everyone at the same time. So at the moment, I'm gaining about 15,000 tourism across everyone. I'm gaining about nine tourists per turn. So they're gaining three, we're capturing nine. We're gaining six on them every turn. The difference is about 200, 200 divided by six, about 30 something, which means we should have about 30 something turns. Yeah, 28 turns. That's how it calculates it. I'm gonna show you how to just really push that one through. First of all, Margaret Mead, just a nice, helpful little boost of science. If you can take her to the border somewhere with a campus, Zulu's got one right there. Wonderful. What's this doing? Oh, a spy. Stole some gold and escaped. Lovely. We are looking for, ah, here we go, Mary Leakey. Oh, oh, it's done that annoying thing where the game has given us another atomic era scientist and it's made this one really, really cheap. So somebody's just going to pick up Mary Leakey. Ah, this is actually, that's annoying. That would have given me about 300% more tourism 
from artifacts. It's not the biggest deal. It would have been about 27 per museum. So I'm missing out on about 100 tourism not getting her. Never mind. Instead, I'm going to use my faith and just make sure we get Sarah Breedlove. That's 25% extra tourism on my trade routes worth about three to 400 tourism. So she's way more effective. I'm going to show you another uh, thing you can do late game as well, which is entirely hilarious. Uh, and it involves using a spy, which has two promotions. If you just go to this, you'll see that this spy is called Trude. Trude is a secret agent. So when I go into Madrid, I can get listening post, which gives me two levels if I'm a secret agent or above. We're going to start doing that. Because of my merchant, if I have a unit nearby, so for instance, this crossbow, and I attack a city, you'll see I've got a plus six intel on their movements now. Very handy indeed. So we can see just how effective this tourism boost is. Check out Zulu and India. These are two good examples. 2,100 and 2,400 tourism. Sarah Breedlove comes in. And now we've got 2,500 and 2,800. Oh yeah, every single civilization has got about three to 400 more tourism per turn. It's lovely to see. Now you just watch. Watch and wait to see the tourism go even higher. Oh, one well, note. Zulu have now stuck a rock band on their own campus. I was going to boost that this turn. That's hilarious. Okay, we're gonna have to wait until next turn. Zulu, this game, have just been the absolute master of trolling me by leaving their units everywhere I don't want them to be left. <laughs> It's kind of what's happening. Ah, Barcelona. I need, hmm, let's have a look. A hangar, an airport. Gives me some era score. I mean, Spain still have 200 military strength and they've denounced me and they're right on the border. They won't mind if right on their border, I just use democracy with its extra gold purchasing discount to buy a bomber uh, and then another bomber and then another bomber and uh, maybe a fighter if I just trade a little bit. Maybe get rid of some uranium. Yeah, selling uranium to England, that's never a bad thing. Thing. I could never go wrong. There we go. Yeah, look at this now. We've got Sarah Breedlove. It's 20 turns on the culture victory and we haven't even wound up our tourism yet, but we can now because we've got predictive systems. Offshore wind farms. Let me just show you how effective these are. Find any coastal tile without an improvement. Pop one down. Press seven for the tourism lens and have a look. 10 tourism per turn for every tile. Let me just put that into perspective. A full amphitheater has eight tourism. This is 10. Yep. And now I've just basically got about 501 builders all ready to go. Just putting endless offshore wind farms down over and over and over. And also we're now reducing our power supply down to pretty much zero whilst we're doing it as well, just for a bit of fun. Oh look, Arken has finished its spaceport first as well. Excellent. Earth satellite in six turns. Well, that's pretty easy to do. Plus, don't forget we have the Royal Society, so I can boost this by moving six charge builders onto Arken. And I think each charge does like 3% of the project. So six charges is like 18% of the project. It's massive. Way too big. No more twist. Best quote in the game. Oh, that makes me laugh every time. So this is what you can do once you have a science video. I, I didn't really want to make domination part of the run. But domination, be, it can be claimed at any time, right? And this is what I could be doing. Pivoting at turn 235 onto domination. We were talking before about things you do if the game isn't going well. Say I was going for a particular one or a particular strategy and I needed to pivot. This is one way you can do it. Find somebody who's technologically way behind you. If I have a look at myself, you can see I'm on 62 technologies. Spain has 43. That is two entire eras behind me. In fact, actually we can see Spain is only just on flight, replaceable parts, steel or refining. I'm all the way here in information era. I have planes, they do not. My planes are very disgruntled, very upset with what Spain are up to. And bombers, well, they disintegrate to great walls as you can see Valencia is already down to zero health I just need a melee troop now to come and deal the final blow there we go a modern armor yeah that'll do just a nice new squeaky clean tank you can see when the bombers attack we have plus nine intel on opponents movements so that's the great merchant and then the spy in Madrid having a lot of fun and don't forget when you declare war on somebody it's best to go to every single other player in the game that isn't at war with your target and before you really start doing anything too too bad so don't take any cities ask everybody to join in with the war yeah England's always up for a war with Spain of course they are so only Nubia won't join in but everyone else will so they're gonna forgive all of my war crimes travesties whatever you want to call them it's fine so I've got globalization that now means that I could look to get international space agency which is a really big deal for me I'm gonna put that instead of this just for a little bit we're getting tourism we're getting housing public works is still really good five-year plans 
cards to really get... I'm pretty happy with what my government looks like at the moment. I just need more cards. That's the main thing. More cards. More of everything. And then we pick a uh, tier 4 government. Once you've gone tier 3, you might as well pay, uh, take a tier 4. There is no tourism penalty for being in a tier 4 government. It's just, are you in a tier 3 or above? Is your opponent in a tier 3 or above? That's the only way it looks at it. And just be aware, look how much my tourism of Spain has fallen now. No open borders, no trade route. We've lost about 2,000 tourism per turn. If I knock them out of the game as well, it gets even worse. I have gained 22 tourists from Spain, so if I get knocked out, I lose those against my total. The only one it makes sense to take out would be Shaka, because Shaka's got the most tourism. So if Shaka wasn't in the game, this 345 would drop to 278, and I'd lose 23 tourists, but you might find that the game begins to get a little bit easier to win. If you have Biosphere, there is only one logical choice, Synthetic Technocracy. Now you might be looking at it and thinking, hey, minus 10 tourism? Or 10% tourism, that's really bad. That's really bad for a tourism victory. But plus three power in all cities, that counts as green power, which means Biosphere triples it. So every city gets nine power and every city gets nine tourism. It's way more than the minus 10% malice. Way more. Every time. Oh, look, Geneva's just been liberated. Well done, England. They finally got round to it. This is really good. I can actually boost my tourism up a little bit more now. As I unlock uranium, we notice that Coupe has given us 1,400 gold. Yay! That Avery Crust was worth it. And the World's Fair, I'm 5,000 points above everybody else. You know what that is? Science Foundations, this card. It's just winning it for me. Spain is just very, very, very easy to flatten. Oh, look at that. Rupert is saying that Maori is no longer seeking a diplomatic victory. Funny that. I've already won it, but sure. Right, if you take a city, first thing you do once you've discovered steel is just repair outer defenses. The walls get put up really, really quickly. And then immediately we find our next target. Let's uh, take this city, for instance, and then we throw our bombers immediately on it. And as you can see, because Spain doesn't know what a plane is, there's nothing they can do. And the city is already at zero health and the modern armor next turn will fly straight in. Lovely. I gained 1,500 tourism last turn. That was just from all of these builders and they barely got started. We're going to see our tourism spike hilariously. Watch this earth satellite. We can go builder, use my charge. Bam. Takes a turn off it. Lovely. And just we'll, we'll our gold per turn. I'm just going to throw it into a new builder and the city can self-sustain. Boost its own project by building a builder itself. Use a builder from a city to do the project in the same city. It's fine. It makes total sense. There goes the modern armor. We take a second city and oh look, our fighters are ready to go again and so are our bombers. One, two, three, city's ready to go. They even left me a builder so I can build some more solar farms and work on the tourism. This is a really good way, by the way, if you'd run out of space to claim some more. Just steal the city. It's probably fine. You can probably sleep after doing this sort of thing. Maybe. I'll show you just what a change this makes. We're on 1,639 tourism right now. So let's go to synthetic technocracy. We'll just make sure everything is in place as we need it to be. Online communities, five-year plan, public works. We have more space in the government. So I will put in heritage tourism. A little bit more from artifacts and from artwork. There's the culture. We'll go for democratic legacy, Republican legacy and hey presto there's my other win so i would have won the diplomatic victory on this turn if i hadn't already done it well i just took a city from mapuche from loyalty oh that's uranium but it's underwater i'll we'll go and try and fish that out one more city taken from spain or oh, another quick vote as you can see this is what i mean about republican legacy sorry not republican legacy monarchic legacy i have 1400 now and i wouldn't be able to do anything if this was a genuine 15 out of 20 or more situation you'd find that ai would now vote for you to lose lose diplomacy points so you should put them in this or one vote to have yourself lose points you'll lose the two points but then you'll gain one from winning the resolution so you'll only lose one in this instance i'm actually i actually don't know if the ai still votes against you if the game's already over so we'll have a quick peek on that always go for production on mercenary companies and migration treaty i'm gonna say minus five loyalty towards spain no one likes spain production oh no it went to me and i lose two points yep so it still votes against you this is what i'm talking about I'll after 15 out of 20 points, everyone will vote against you with full force. There's no way you can beat that. So vote with them. Up until the point that you get to this point on the civic tree, and then you can start looking for carbon recapture. Then you can do the threes the world glitch. And after that, nobody can beat you. 
The world is currently 2.4 degrees warmer than normal. Once it starts to heat up, the game looks at how much carbon you're putting into the atmosphere every turn. You can see I'm barely putting anything in because I'm entirely green powered these days. I mean, you get a penalty based on your contribution. However, if you use the carbon recapture project and bring the global temperature below zero, which is surprisingly easy to do, especially as Germany, the way the game calculates it gets really funny. You have a minus huge number, minus massive. Any AI that has ever put carbon into the atmosphere, so at the moment it would be not Maori or Spain, but everyone else, instantly takes a minus 20 carbon output malice to the diplomatic favor. Which means from that point, no one will ever have anything because the AI never gets 20 per turn. It doesn't do it. So they'll go to zero or below. And at that point, every single vote is yours to win. And, and did you see this as well? We've gone to 2000 tourism. So it went from 1,600 and something to 2000. I would say that's probably about an 100 higher than it should be. So even with the 10% penalty, it's still worth changing. Now there will be a tipping point. Eventually the number of cities we'll have will not exceed the amount of improvements we have. And at that point, the 10% penalty becomes more of a problem. But you've also got a government with 10 policy slots. So you may, you know, it's fine. Oh, and I made some new boats as well. Sorry, Spain. <laughs> this is not what you want to do normally, because if you take the city with your spy in, you lose all the combat power. But honestly, right now, it's not like Spain have really got a resistance to it. There is my spy. And how many turns is it going to take you to go back to Spain? Three turns to Toledo. What about Mercia? Four turns. Yeah, I do it. If you ever see a city showing that your population's going to starve after you take it, it's because the deity AI is programmed to understand that food works with a huge buff. You take the city over working exactly the same tiles, you don't have the food buff, so it will be starving. Just press this button a few times until it goes back to normal, and now it's not starving anymore. Just recalibrates it. Easy to do. Ah, Sergey. All Sergey needs to do, because you've got mausoleum, is wait until your last two projects. I'm going to leave you by Munich. We have one more turn until the Earth satellite finishes. We're still printing up builders, because we've just got environmental power going down literally on every tile available. I wish there was diversity in my nation. There is not. And you can see now that we've gone to that tier 4 government, victory in 10 turns. What did I say? Tourism between 1,500 and 2,500. I'm bang on the money, aren't I? Now we're producing between about 3,800, so it's about 4,000 tourism per turn. If I wasn't at war with Spain, we would be gaining 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24, about 28,000 tourism, which divides into about 17 or 18 tourists per turn. Zulu is only getting 4, so we're capturing 14 on them every turn. About 140 difference between me and them, so it's about 10 turns. Yeah, it's dead on. The maths always works. Yeah, once you understand the maths, it's it's really easy. You know, they're still attacking Cardiff. They're still attacking Cardiff. I never moved my units. It's basically a warrior and an archer. They could absolutely be hit through if they wanted to, but I'm not letting them take it. I refuse. It's my city state. Mine. And there's the Earth satellite. Only one more project to go, and then I'll show you what you do with Korolev. By the way, there's no rush until you finish Exoplanet, because ultimately, you know, we can do these projects as quick as we want, but until we get the Exoplanet, planet the 50 turn time down it doesn't start so there's no point bird arkin yeah if you want to do the moon landing seven turns go on them this is where goddard would have been good 40 percent bonus to all of these projects yeah absolutely excellent actually you know what no we're gonna do it in munich because we do have pingala's bonus don't we so i mean it doesn't really take any time off no it's still seven turns <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Munich isn't quite as productive as Arkin is. Do I feel bad about taking, like, a city every single turn? No. I feel bad that I don't have enough bombers to be doing this even quicker. My aluminium is actually 12 per turn, so I could have 12 bombers. I'm underselling this considerably. Make sure you have integrated space cell in your capital, which I've got because I've got a seaport in this city, I believe. Yep, 15% bonus, and now we take the five charge builder and we go BAM! Oh, that took more than a turn off. That's lovely. At this stage of the game, you have enough gold to just go for every boost. Like, build a nuclear power plant? Well, I've got 4,000 spare gold. So, yes, done. Three envoys into Geneva to give me a bit more science, but done. Lovely. Thank you, Salamanca. Any city with access to the coast right now? That's worth a lot of tourism for me. There's global warming mitigation. Did play victory point, but this project is just repeatable. And up to that point, yeah, did play victory. No one can stop you. Still rushing the moon landing. In fact, we're even settling new cities. Look at this. I think Spain did have a city there, and I think it might have got raised by Mapuche. Don't don't ask questions, just accept. Yep, my planes are still as effective as ever. Still taking one city every turn. Oh, I can liberate this one to Maui. Oh, I'm such a nice person. Go on, man. You can have this city back. I mean, I'll take it from you again in another five or six turns. I'm just trying to change the production on it there. I don't know why I'm doing that. It's the whole point of giving it up, isn't it? 
It's not mine anymore. Don't mind me if I borrow Geneva. That's now 15% science return to my empire. 1,300. Lovely. Let's rush this. And there's the moon landing. This gives you a huge, huge culture bonus equal to 10 times my science per turn, which is great because I just boosted it. So that's 13,000 culture we've just gained. That's enough to one turn pretty much every civic until the end of the game. Well, this is what we've saved Korolev for. Let's go Mars Colony, put you to the front of the queue, and immediately use one charge. And there you go. The project is now finished. This is what you do in Deity. Save your engineer charges, your Korolev, your Carl Sagan, whoever it is that's boosting your projects for the end ones, the last ones. They're much more expensive, and you still get the full boost. So you might as well use it on that. Carl Sagan. This is the other person I was talking about with a boost. Two turns off Exo Planet now, and then a few techs to go. Scientifically, I've kind of shown you everything I need to show you now. We've got one, two, three, four, five spaceports. You don't need any more than that. And they're all spaceports in cities with more than a hundred production. It's totally overkill. But all we'd have to do now is just get the last project, get this tech, and win. So one thing I did want to show you before I finished off was, I mean, we've covered the diplomacy point of view, we've covered the science point of view, but culture. Do you remember I was saying I needed to get to between 1,500 and 2,500 tourism per turn? This is what it looks like. It says 2,393. It hasn't updated yet. We've now hit 2,500 with the last few tourism improvements. Just pressing 7 on your keyboard will show you the tourism lens and you can see what the biosphere is doing now. It's insane. But if I look into the maps of what 2,500 tourism looks like, we will see now that we have pretty much 5,000 tourism in most civilizations. In fact, what you can do is change back down a government. Let's, I don't know, let's pick uh, autocracy. Why not? None of this really matters for the purposes of what I'm going to show you now. Let's just get rid of all this. As long as we've got online communities in, heritage tourism, that's it. That's all that really matters in this particular example. You can see now that we've lost the government penalty with most people. I've lost, unfortunately, a little bit of power from going up the tier 4 government, but we're still at about 5,000 tourism per turn. So you can see the tier 4 really wasn't penalizing me at all. As long as you go for synthetic technocracy, digital democracy, corporate libertarianism, none of that works. Don't pick those. Just the one that gives you power. But we're gaining 5,000 tourism with people now. That's 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35,000 tourism. We are gaining about 22 foreign tourists per turn. Even better, I am gaining as many tourists from Zulu as they are gaining themselves. So this number, 362, is not increasing. So we're gaining 22 tourists per turn, which is why this is currently saying we're going to win in four turns. It's actually closer to three. But with 2,500 tourism, we're now gaining 22 tourists per turn. Even if we were coming into this with zero tourists and we needed to get to 363. That would take us 15 turns. That's what I mean about 2,500 tourism. You don't need any more than that. Anything else is overkill. Trust me. And it can get even sillier because as we get into the later stages of the game, there is an atomic era merchant called Melita who does another 25% to trade rates, which is just ridiculous. In fact, actually, we can do industrial zone districts giving us tourism and campuses giving us tourism. Oh, why not? That's what you have to say. Why not? Even Kenzo would give tourism equal to half of the district's adjacency bonus. All I need to do is use you in Berlin. Look at that. Yeah, it'd be pretty crazy. You don't need any more tourism. Hell, look, even if I was actually competing against somebody with my culture, so I needed to get to 676 tourists, I would still do that from scratch in 32 turns. We are well on course for a 255 science victory, and all I've been focusing on this game is just rolling with the punches, building up my economy, building up my production, building up my gold. Everything else, well, it just sorts of falls into place, doesn't it? If we look back against the failures of this campaign, what did I do when I lost a religion? Well, I just rolled with it, I picked the opponent's religion, and I went with it. What did I do when Spain attacked me? I took their cities. What did I do when wonders were stolen? I used the production to get districts. What did I do when cities were flooded? I repaired them and built dams. If in doubt, stay calm, build a fidget spinner. It's glorious. So there we are, Ludwig, the Swan King. I had so much fun putting this, what would you call it, over-explained guide series? An assortment of crazy thoughts from the pits of my mad brain? Whatever you might call this. I hope that everybody took a little something away. If you've got any more questions about this and it's not something you can put in the comments, come along to Discord. There's all sorts of chats about Civ all the time. I even hang in there myself. I might see you talk. You can always go over the things that I've spoken about. The community is really helpful as well. I'm sure they can clarify some things or even improve on my strategy in certain ways. After all, there are some very silly deity scientific turn records. Oh, ridiculous numbers I've seen. As ever, if you could like the video, it's a 
subscribe to the channel, all that sort of stuff. The algorithm is a really, really fighty beast and anything you can do to help really massively is appreciated by us. It helps more people to see these videos, helps us to make more, helps more people to benefit. It's all good. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. I really, really hope this was helpful. I'll leave the save file for the end of the game in Discord if you want to come and have a look for it. Might be good to study, see what I did, see what you can copy. But I've got to go. There's another series calling me. Another video that's going to start immediately after this one finishes. Keep watching forever, forever and ever and ever. See you all next time. Goodbye. And finally, a very special shout out goes to Glorious Petra, Matthew Wilkinson, Paul Coffey, Portland, Clint Hennis, Scott Stratton, Major King Kong, Skeptical Bear, Cinnamon Beard, Petra Ryan, Radiatore, Private Selection, Genoa Salami, Callum Billy, Garrett Gowan, Polar Bear Ray, El Truant, Creston, RB Hedged, Mushkin Mandeltort, Debel Time, Burial, I'm Daft, Gooberman, Dr. Bobby, Polar Waller Bear, Mixamatosis, NTG Golfman, Victor McPupster, Indigenous 68, Technology Poet, Teddy Zursa, Zaf, Barnaby Rex, Sharky Bates, Charlie Bears. Thank you everyone for your support. See you all in the next video. Goodbye!